want everyone to take a really deep breath because I'm going to do that right now too. What are the consequences for not looking to artists to help address the healthcare crisis in the US? The consequence is staying disconnected from our power to make the connections we need to be healthy. Health comes from the word whole. We need to look at the example and presence of artists who elevate our connections so that we can be healthy because we can be whole. Healthcare divides us into parts and specialists who treat those parts. The psychologist you see for your mind doesn't talk to the doctor you see for your body. And these divisions form silos and within these silos, we become fragmented and erased. You all may not be artists, but you are creators. And it's up to you to find the creative acts of connection that will make you feel whole. For you, silos may look more like being in a degree that doesn't really use your talents, or being in a profession where you're not making the impact you want to. And for many, it means living with overlapping health conditions. When I was 14, I learned firsthand what the silos of healthcare can do to fragment and erase your identity. When I was 14, I came out as being gay to my parents. And within one month, I had lost 20 pounds. I went to my doctor and said, I, I came out and I'm feeling so sick. My heart is beating so fast and so loud. And so right there, they did an EKG. The results came back normal. I was sent home. I went back to the doctor and said, I am feeling so sick. And they said, okay, we're gonna send you to a heart doctor. It turns out I have a really good looking heart and I was sent home. And then I started to lose my vision and I went back to the doctor and they said, I'm gonna send you to an eye doctor. And I was so excited because I did get a prescription for glasses and that was a fashion statement I had wanted at the time. <laughs> but I actually started to feel even worse and I was sent home. And often when things can't be described or explained, you get sent to the psychologist. We were told you should probably see, see a psychologist. My feelings of being sick were not coming from coming out. If the doctor had asked me, well, but how is that making you feel? I would have said, you know, I've never felt more relieved in my life and yet I still feel like I'm going to die. My blood was becoming toxic from high blood sugar from undiagnosed type one diabetes. Silos can look like the expertise we have. If any one of those doctors had looked at me as a full person, they could have seen the signs and made the diagnosis. We found out because my mom took a cup of urine to the doctor before school one day and forced them to test it. Have any of you ever felt erased or fragmented in the healthcare system? At one point, we all become patients. My name is Justice Harris. I'm an artist, I'm a designer, I'm gay, I'm someone with diabetes, and I've utilized the arts to become an expert patient. At this point, you're probably wondering, well, okay, where are the arts and healthcare? What do artists have to do with this? 
my definition of art is what it's like to be alive. Through the expanded perspective of art, this can look like what a studio is, being connected to monitors. And the tenets of being an artist and thinking like an artist are experimenting despite the unknown, creating even if you're not an expert, and collaborating even if you haven't found the perfect reason yet. These are images of me in medical studies that I signed up for. And I started with experimenting, asking, what does this mean? What do these graphs mean? What do these charts mean? Asking the people running the study, what did they understand? And you know what I realized? They understood a lot more than I did. And the images and information they saw about my body was more meaningful to them than it was to me. This image is of diabetes data from one day. Insulin levels, blood sugar levels. This comes from the data silo that shows this is what it looks like. This is what your health is. And I thought there has to be a better way to present this because this is just what one month looks like, the solely medical way to look at the body. And so, tenant two, create even if you're not an expert. I went to the Chicago Public Library, who has a maker lab, and the librarians were teaching 3D printing. And I said, I want to make something as tangible as I am to show my health, something that comes from my own data. And so the sculpture shows Monday to Sunday, the same information from those graphs on forms that summarize that information in a way that's meaningful to me. Where an entire month can be looked at and compared, where each side is a week. And where the forms have a connection to nature and ways that we look about the world, where high blood sugars are like the peaks of a mountain where days that went well and were smooth were like the smooth ridges of a hill. And where days with profound low blood sugar had a dip like the dips in the earth. And not just one month, but three months could be looked at and understood at a glance, where a time on the left that had higher blood sugar, also shown by the color red, smoothed out into softer shapes and forms with the yellow and green sculptures. What also happened though, was that other people started reaching out to me. They wanted to see what their data and what their body could look like outside of the solely medical. This is a portrait of me and it is a portrait of someone else with diabetes holding their data. It is a picture of people beyond the solely medical. And one of the biggest impacts was actually starting to attract a community of people, not just to understand the information about my body. That's at an individual level. But what can the arts do to look at something the size of a city? I live in Chicago, and this is what data looks like when you look at just the blocks that are researched. Is that something that is easy to understand for many people? So something like the commute of the train line on your way to work from home became a language to look at health data, transforming life expectancy and diabetes data into something that people could trace like they were on the commute in Chicago and see the health of the city in a different way, in a way that they could touch, in a way that was undeniable. And this led to something that was much bigger actually something that was the size of the United States. Because by doing this, I learned that people with diabetes live 13 years less than people do on average in the US. And so suddenly it became a very personal topic. And I wanted to create a system that could make it individual and understood at a personal level 
And so tenet three of thinking like an artist is collaborating. I reached out to a software engineer who had diabetes, and we designed a system where life expectancy, in this case, on the left with a bright white figure, an average, could be compared to the figure on the right that is speckled and hazy and shows someone with a life expectancy that is possible for someone like me. We created a system where people could walk behind a monitor with a special camera mounted to it and see themselves and the life expectancy mapped out into their own body from zip codes across the United States and from different time periods. In a way that it was almost like taking a selfie and spoke a different language about health. Art and communicating health information takes more than the form of visual art. There are other artists breaking silos in other mediums. Marina Saplina is an activist, scholar, and puppeteer. The work they do uses puppetry to embody the experience of chronic illness, so it can be understood outside of the body, where people can relate to their lives in a different way. Thousands of clinicians, adults, and children have experienced their work across the country. Yoko Sen is a musician, and Yoko's work focuses on what might be the last sound you hear in a hospital. Do you want it to be the beeping of alarms? Or if you're a physician, how do you manage the alarm fatigue every day that creates hazards for your patients? Yoko's mission is to bring sound design to our experience and dignity in hospitals. And fashion. Sky Kubakub is creating a fashion line for the full spectrum of gender, size, and ability. As a queer crypt designer, they also have a zine and look at fashion and clothing as a second skin. The role of the artist isn't only to make things that are more beautiful in our society, but it's also to go into places where the absence of connection and the absence of imagination are the most profound. Recently, I spent two weeks at a medical facility here in North Carolina. I did medical simulations with mannequins. I toured their state-of-the-art facilities. And I talked with the staff. Staff and people in medicine across the country have shared their experience with depression and suicide is some of the highest in the nation. In fact, for doctors, it's the highest of any profession. This is a crisis, but it is also a moment for collaboration. Time and time again, they said, the thing that's so hard for us is it's a hard to imagine what it might be like any other way. Why couldn't this be what the doctor's office had looked like when I was 14? Full of color, full of life. Through the expanded lens of art, why couldn't it be not just to look at data, but to review our entire life? Five years ago, when I realized that the healthcare system didn't cater to my full humanity, I reached out to those professionals. I didn't know what the answers would be. I didn't know where this would lead. Just like artists do every time they go to the studio, being prepared for the unknown and being okay with it. What would your life look like if you allowed yourself to experience your full health? adopting some of the tenets of thinking like an artist, of collaborating, of creating despite not being the expert, and of experimenting despite the profound unknown. My request to you is to consider yourself creators now. 
Your studio is where you are right now. Your acts, reaching out for help and helping others, are creative acts that you have access to right now. I am not a Renaissance artist, and you are not Renaissance people. We are not like da Vinci, and that's okay. Taking the action to connect with someone into the unknown and collaborate can help us form Renaissance communities. And in doing so, your conditions will become your connections. <laughs>